Boys, guys, this is episode two of the drift car series, and we got a lot of work done. And let me just start this off by the car's name is Skirt because the car will be skirting around the corners. Let's continue into the drift car episode two. So to start it out, what basically happened was I had a lot of footage of me working on the car, and I actually lost about 40 gigs of footage, but it's okay because I had to end up recording a little more footage. That's why it's a little late, which I apologize for, but I mean, you lose 40 gigs of footage. I paid $90 to try and get it back, and I couldn't even get it back. It just got back the thumbnails, which that's a waste of 90 bucks that I could have spent on car parts. Life is life, and we're just going to move forward from here. So if you like it, please give me a like. Got more content, got more stuff done. So, got a good video for y'all. All right, guys. So, as you can see, I bolted the turbo on there, and y'all have seen that before. Um, that's basically where we left it off at, is I put the turbo on the car and basically just wanted to see what it looked like from the stock location. And these are upside down because technically these were supposed to be ran up for the old SN95 style. The body style before this one, before the new edge. And it's supposed to be run out because the fenders have a little bit more gap here, and they're supposed to be run out right here, and you'd have to cut out a lot of stuff and a lot of sheet metal right here in the body. I don't want to do that to this car. I want to keep this car's body somewhat straight, so that way we can keep it easy and clean and simple what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take this header right here cut right there and I'm gonna take it up and put it right here so the turbo is above the oil pan drain which is gonna sit down here and you want your turbos to be above your oil pan drain because you want gravity to be able to knock them back in there but if uh, it's too low then you're gonna have to get a scavenge pump and basically takes the oil from inside of there and it pumps it back into the oil pan um, basically the same thing on this side and this one I might have to actually move the header itself because the way the header is routed you can see that on that power steering line it touches that could be an issue however we're gonna get it figured out there is nothing in there the basic necessities this is the harness for the engine pretty much this is the engine control harness pretty much uh your fuel rails and all that fancy stuff are gonna be on here that's that harness this is your fuel line which i want to make this bigger i'm probably going to end up building some bigger rails eventually this is all aluminum i'm pretty sure so i can just weld on and make my own aluminum thing and then attach some 6an bungs so that way we can get some better fuel inside of these guys also possibly at another custom intake soon i got some ideas in the works but also gonna have to run pcv also delete evap egr and all that stuff also take out those o2 sensors which i need to take out the full exhaust the rest of the exhaust is down there you can kind of see it's just hanging from the bottom of the car we are going to go ahead and take off that exhaust right now and then we're going to put an 88 under this car because as y'all know by this video the 7.5 diffs in these cars are trash. If you want to do any sort of fun with a V6 Mustang, the only thing I do recommend off the gate, get you an 88 rear end from a GT. You can go to a junkyard, get one. Most junkyards, they'll charge you a hundred bucks for them. It's worth every freaking cent because you can just get so much more power out of them and you're not going to sit there breaking them. And the worst thing is when you're out of town. Me and I are going on a trip to Dallas to go racing. In Dallas. Oh, you're going to break your damn transmission. Four hours away from home. <laughs> Yep. And you blow up your diff. We're making it back to Louisiana tonight. That was not a fun trip, but there's a video about that. Click it up there. But let's go ahead. I'm going to take off the rear end and also take off the exhaust. And we're going to get this car swapped out to an 8.8. .8. We're going to be able to drift. We need that We need that angle, so I'm going to be cutting the spindles and possibly cutting the A-arms. Got some more mods and stuff that we're going to put on the inside of the car. I have a nice rear view mirror that I'm going to get, like a drift style rear view mirror, like a golf cart. And then just some other small things. I also I talked to the guys at N2MB and they texted me and told me what to do to the car in order to fix it. They told me how to wire up the watt box and how to make it work for my car. I need to go ahead and get started on pulling the exhaust off of this thing. First off, let me take off this watch. All right, there is an O2 sensor right there that I need to unplug. There's one. There's one on the other side too. This one will be a little bit harder to get to. I can get to both of those easy on the bottom side. Ah, there's two. Now I gotta get the other one on this side. And then those bolts right there, which should be 9 16 or something like that. Then we can get this wide pipe off. They're gonna be one of these that I have. It's 13, 14, 15, and 9 16. That's usually what exhaust bolts are. One of those. That was a 14. So now I gotta do the same thing over here. That one came out a lot easier. The Y pipe now can come off. It's 
So first off, let's just check these exhausts out. Every V6 New Edge Mustang that I've seen has had cracked exhausts right where people re-weld it. Like if you look right here, you can see there's a crack right there. That's an exhaust leak. There's a crack right there. That's an exhaust leak. And there's just cracks all throughout these things. That's where the exhaust leaks come from, or these, or these right here. And you could definitely tell someone took a Harbor Freight welder and they went to work on this thing. Not enough volts, and they're using flux core. And I can tell that just from here. This broom has been up since last week. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with taking the rear end off the car because the 7.5 rear ends on Fords are trash. All right, so let's go ahead and get started taking off these wheels, which I already took off all the lug nuts. thing these freaking seven fives are good for nothing on these cars they will blow up just like nothing as you've seen let's go ahead get rid of these let's see what they are right here 223s so let's get rid of these 223s and let's put an 88 in here and then from here my next goal is to take off the alternator and power steering pump because a i'm replacing the power steering pump and b i also needed to get clearance for the headers and make sure i have enough room for everything so i can fab up the turbo kit without anything being in the way or getting touched or burning off any lines etc so just basically giving myself more space to fab up the turbo kit <laughs> turn this thing on okay so at this moment i didn't really know what was going on but apparently i forgot to leave one of the spark plug wires and it actually broke the wire because it spun through the crank you'll be able to see what i'm talking about here in just a second that was a mistake and i ended up breaking a plug wire but i didn't find out what happened until a little bit later but you'll see later on in the video all right so she starts let's see if anything down there messed up Oh, that's not going to happen. That dipstick right there is broken. That's just wackily put together. I might actually have to take the header off. You know what? I might can get it on the bottom side. Well, guys, I think we have reached a stopping point. This right here is the spark plug that I accidentally just cracked. You can see the porcelain is cracked right there. And I was like, okay, I got extra spark plugs. I'll go ahead and grab a new one. Then you look at the threads and you can see that the spark plug that was in the car, the broken one has been re-threaded before. And they put a re-thread kit on it. These threads are wider than those ones. So it popped out a spark plug out of the head and they had to re-tap it and put a new one in. I don't know how good that's gonna do against boost being a re-drilled head. Oh, uh, why did it have to be the one that broke, man? So what happened with the spark plugs is I ended up using that same spark plug cap piece it, it's hard to explain basically like you have the spark plug it blows out you drill a hole then you go back in sorry my hands are dirty i've been working on the car you go in you drill a hole 
basically get an adapter that screws into the spark plug threads and then it has a different set of threads on the outside of it and that screws into the head itself and you have to self drill it. Basically what I did was I took that piece off of the single spark plug, put it onto the new spark plug and then bolted it back in. The reason I was having trouble with breaking the spark plugs is because the headers, since they're running upside down, they didn't have any extra room for the spark plugs to fit inside. When I was trying to tighten down the header, it actually tightened the spark plug and broke the porcelain on it. I'm turning this thing on again. I have the stock header on there. I just put that plug back in its place with the broken porcelain. I'm just going to see if it will uh, run without it. It probably won't even run on all cylinders anyways because there's no O2s, but there's no O2s, there's no EGR, and we're on stock tune. So not really dealing with the best, but we can make something work. She's missing on a few plugs. Oh. That thing sounds like a Kubota. If it had the cylinders all firing, it would sound great, but. <laughs> Didn't sound like it's misfiring to me at all actually it felt like it dude it's gonna run bad like <laughs> one i don't know if that one's on that one was that one was i don't think that one was one two it's firing on all of them except for this one right now yeah i, I really wouldn't be so sure bro i think you I think you're losing it Dude, what, what am I? Dude, this is not here, Sean. You are you are an insane man. This this is broken. This is broken. Yeah. That is why I have a misfire. Cut it open with a razor blade. I don't even care. It's broken. You got to. So I went ahead and grabbed a new spark plug wire from Yeet and plugged it in, and we went ahead and gave it a shot. <clears throat> All right. Hopefully that's the right firing order. There she is. <laughs> Told you it smooths way out. Now how it doesn't sound like a tractor anymore. It smooths way out once you get the uh, right coil. Sucker sounds like it has a 350 race cam in there. <laughs> it's got no O2 sensors in there. <laughs> wow, that fixed my problems. That I, I went from being really scared to like happy. So that's good. This thing runs now. It no longer has a misfire. I was telling you it had a misfire. You told me it didn't have a misfire. Luckily, we figured out that... Of course it has a misfire. It's got two misfires. <laughs> it's well, yeah, V6. it's because of V6, dog. <laughs> so for oil feed, I have two options. I can tap into this right here, directly straight, or there's a little bung right there that I have threads for that I can tap into down there on the bottom side of the oil pump. I just don't know which one I want to do. And then drains on that side of the pan. You could really just unscrew this and then put like a little uh, brass... T. T. Yeah, they got them at the parts store. Because I bet you that's that's eighth inch. Yeah, and then I have the adapter already for then, uh, then, for yeah. four a.m. And then you could just screw it in that side. Yeah, I've got a four a.m. adapter myself too. Oh shoot. Well, there you go. There you go. Well, there you go. Sean, we made it work. She's running. She's hey. running good. And it sounded good too. It, obviously, there was a vacuum leak, so it took way long for the throttle to get back down low. But once it did, it was loping out. Everyone talks about the big ghost cam. It's pretty much what that is because there's no O2 sensors. This Dagum car is loud, son. Listen here. So you might be thinking, Poe, what the heck are you doing? Why are you taking the 7.5 out? You don't have another 8.8. That's where you're wrong. I told y'all I got you covered.
Adios, Melo. You finally get to see the wheels. All right, let's attach all this stuff. Thank you, sir. I got this. Now you have a good one. That man walked up to me and he said, man, do you want to buy a cowboy boot? Five dollars. <laughs> I just didn't have five dollars on me, man. Yeah, no, seriously, this dude just walked up to me and asked me for a cowboy boot, just one of them, and he was asking five dollars for it. I didn't have five dollars, so I gave him a dollar. Do a good thing every once in a while, it goes a long way. Do the same thing yourself. I have the SCT back. Finally got shipped back from SCT. That was what I was waiting on for this episode. Now I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. We're gonna go ahead and get this car married to this ECU, and then we can go from there. I can fix a few things on the tune. All right, now she's plugged in. And with all SCTs, don't turn the car on, just turn the ignition on, program vehicle. You can see the car right there is finally getting some stuff done to it. First time this car has had any sort of tuning capability stuff done to it. And we're also gonna put this mirror and harness bar up. All right, download complete. The new tune should be on there, or at least the new options should be on there and the car might run a little bit better. Let's go ahead and give her a start. Okay, yeah, she runs way better. You can already hear it. So now that the motor runs somewhat good, even though there's no O2 sensors, it still is tuned for it not having EGR and other small things in the tune. Basically just kind of cleared it up a little bit. It sounds a lot more healthy. Now that the engine is ready to be twin turboed and everything is ready to be done, all the work is ready to be done as far as the engine is prepped for the work to be started. So that'll be starting next video, which is why you should subscribe and press the notifications because when it comes out, I want y'all to be watching and get ready to watch because it's gonna be freaking awesome. So let's go ahead and pull the interior out of this car because race car car. Ford uses cardboard. <laughs> the headliner's cardboard. <laughs> Gotta take off this headliner. Get one bolt, another bolt, and then I'm gonna rip the headliner around this little square retention thing for the piece of the headliner. Just like this, there we go. So now I can have the sunshades without actually having the headliner in the car. And I just need to pull the cardboard out of this one on the driver's side and we'll be set. Headliner's out. Wow, it looks so clean up under there. Just gotta take out some of that cardboard and uh, see if I can't clean off a little bit of that glue. Wow, that headliner right there has seen some better days. It's got some stains on it, it's a little ugly. Like that's just, oof. Yeah, I really just wanted to keep the top of this thing clean. And like y'all know, I like weight reduction. Drift car, V6, not much power. So we're gonna take the back seats out just to keep the back end a little light. And we're gonna keep everything from here forward. There's this little bar right here. Everything from here forward, we're keeping full interior except for the headliner. Everything from here back is getting taken out and it's just gonna be straight up car. All right guys, so I've done a lot with this car and I'm gonna go ahead and update you with it. Like I explained, I accidentally uploaded all my footage to Premiere, which is the editing software I use. And I accidentally didn't upload it to the actual hard drive or I thought I did, I put it in the folder and whenever I formatted the card so I could record more GoPro footage, the whole thing just deleted all 40 gigs of footage. So kind of a bummer, 40 gigs of lost footage, but oh boy, I'm gonna be able to hook y'all back up to basically what happened. So first off, I took out the radiator. I took out the AC because it was gonna be hard to run the header forward with having AC in there because the lines went down here. The lines went basically right where this header was. I'm probably gonna end up not using this header and using the stock header like I have on this side, but I put both headers on both sides and they really don't fit upside down. The reason why they don't fit is because the bolts right here, you can barely get them 
in. Like I can only get three or four header bolts in there. And if you can only get three bolts in, then it's not worth even having the headers. And on the stock ones, you can see all of the bolt holes are really easy to get to. I'm just gonna cut it right here most likely and then weld down from there, bring the turbos up here. But I did a whole AC delete condenser, everything right here, the EVAP lines, all that stuff. All that's cleared out. I did EGR delete, pretty much just cleaned up everything through here. All the vacuum nipples I just closed off. I moved around some lines right here. The clutch line right here, this is actually goofed. So that's one of those things that I have to buy but can't afford right now. So we're just waiting a little bit. So as far as the engine goes, we just took all that stuff out. Power steering and alternator is off right now, but I'm gonna end up putting the power steering pump and the alternator back on. I have a brand new power steering pump, so I'm not worried about that. But I uh, just wanted to show y'all that this thing's actually been making a little bit of progress. So let me show y'all what I've done to the inside of this thing. And that is it. If you can see, this thing now is solid. We have the nice drift mirror in there. You could see pretty much everything. We have the harness in there. I only have those two straps in. The rest of them is down there. I need to attach them. But I'm also gonna get a passenger seat with a harness so passengers can ride with. And everything back here basically just took everything out for weight reduction. Really nothing big. I'm not gonna use anything back there. I'm not gonna have any people in the back seat while drifting. So might as well just take it out, use the harness bar, and save all that weight. But on the front of the car, I'm gonna keep the full interior because it looks really good. And there's no reason to take an interior that's not already broken and already looks bad. This isn't cracked or anything like it was. That's pretty much how the car sits right now. It has an 8.8 in it. We need to get a dual caliper set up and probably LSD and maybe some different gears up front. We need to do some arms and then we also need to put the turbos on the car. Stay tuned for that in the next episode. All right guys, thank you very much for watching. This concludes the second episode. I'm sorry that I lost footage, but I mean, life happens. We just got to move forward. That's what you got to do. The glass is always half full. Think optimistic. Yeah, I know it sucks, but at the same time, we can go ahead and freaking make more videos. Thank y'all very much. Buy merch. Subscribe. Like the video. Don't forget to send it and be great.